Greetings and salutations to our fine podcast audience. Welcome to Three Peas in a Pod, episode 197. We made it. Three more weeks to 200. I know. You feel it? I, it's getting It's time. getting closer and closer. As, as things do when you just keep you living. You keep doing them. Just keep living. You keep doing them. And it just happens. So uh, looking forward to that. Yeah. Nathan's going to provide us with something fun. I'll, I'll get I'll get some. I'll get something. Something. It, something. It, it was Party pizza. Hats. It was pizza at one time. It was it Chicago was. pizza. That, that's the plan. Chicago I don't think pizza. that place is going to be open by then. I think well, it will. I don't know. It was supposed to open on the 23rd. It didn't. And now it's saying it's supposed to open this week. So we'll see. That's not going to happen. I'm, I'm wondering if they have I looked yet. at it recently. I don't think it's going to happen. We'll see. Okay. You went inside the door. I believe. No, I drove by it. Oh, and okay. I looked closer and I'm going, nah, they're not going to get that. The stuff on the inside is done. I don't know why it's not. I don't know why it's not. Well, either way, we're going to have 200 episodes in about three weeks. Not about, in three weeks. Yeah, that's true. That's how bad. Why did I say about? Because it's going to happen. Well, because we unless had to re- one, Unless something happens. Unless, unless the rapture gets us. And that's what we're going to talk about <laughs> today. Talk what about. a segue. I, I saw it hit you your mind it. at the moment it hit. Mm. I thought, oh, Jason has had a moment of inspiration. I feel oh. like I've talked about this before on some podcasts, but now I think it might have been on our Family Movie Night podcast. The only real experience with anything rapture theology wise, because mm-hmm. I did not grow up, which is this would be a good segue when we're talking about. I did not grow up with this as even a plausible okay. uh, theology for me because we've never taught this at Community Christian Church mm-hmm. uh-huh. as far as the rapture, and we'll talk more about what that is in a moment. So, really, my biggest exposure was there was a phone game I had. And I actually think I had it on my iPod Touch back in the day. It's called Velociraptor. Oh my God. <laughs> it was a great game. And what it is, is it's the end times. And the re- and do the dinosaurs come they're back? Good. No, 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 no. It is the dinosaurs, and you've got to you've got to rapture out the good di- di- rap- velociraptors from the bad ones, and you play the hand of God, just like, and you've got to like oh, flip them into a into the other palm. But of the God. only way you know which ones are the good ones are the ones you take. So any you no, take no, no, no. are the good ones. No, nope, not in how this you, one. How do you know? The red ones are bad and the green oh, ones are good. No, just, that'd be just some so the green that'd velociraptors are good ones. But sometimes they trick you a little bit because they put a red one in a green shirt. And oh, you gotta be careful. Oh. Velociraptor though, excellent game. Wow. I, it's probably it probably it's, it. that sounds horrible. It, it does sound game. horrible. This one game got pretty difficult at times. Uh, hopefully this discussion won't be as bad as that no, game. So, sounded, huh? so for those of you that are like trying to play catch up, uh, this episode came about. Uh, we had, like I said last week. Uh, Ed made one comment in one message a few that weeks ago. This was not the main. It's it was an ancillary to the. Yes. It was in our series where we were t- uh, a rooted series where we were going through the creed. Mm-hmm. That's been the ancient truths that have held the creed. All churches believe these things. Yes. Almost right. every church would say, "I agree with these things." We divide on all kinds of other stuff, but these we agree on. And the last one is, I believe in the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Yep. And as I was beginning to teach that, I said, and for those of you, I, I, this is not an exact quote. I don't remember the exact quote that I said. I said something along the lines of, and for, there are many of you who believe in the rapture, but that's not in the Bible. Yes. Right. Okay. That's so, all I said. That's what you said. And uh, we've gotten some emails. We've gotten people having questions, which is great. We're it not is compl- great. Not complaining Absolutely. at all about that. Wanting to know, wait a minute. I was brought up in a church, or I was taught as a child, or I listened to this preacher or that preacher, or I read this book, or I watched this movie, and it was or all I played Velociraptor. Rapture, <laughs> and it's all about the rapture. And so now you're telling me it's not in the Bible. What gives? We What's figured if some people had questions, maybe more people had questions. Yes, and so we thought we'd take just this episode to maybe clear up some of that. So we're here's where we're going to start. What is the rapture? So I'll tell you what, I did grow up in churches, even though I didn't become a Christian until, I mean, I I did not become a Christian. I don't know if the church I became a Christian and believed this or not. Hmm. I didn't hear them teach it. I grew up in churches that had charts on the wall. And oh, wow. some of you, some of your older people, or maybe some, I hear there's still churches with my wife chart grew up in a church that, that had the chart, the dispensational charts. Mm. And it's full on dispensational, and a lot of you won't know what that means. That it would then indicate the rapture happens here, then the seven years of tribulation happens, then there's the coming of the prophet, there's the beast, then there's the return of Jesus, and the millennial reign begins, and all of that. Uh, so I grew up in all of that, and there was a time in the late 
when I was a young child, where every youth event you went to, they either talked about the late great planet Earth, mm -hmm. which is based on that philosophy. Yeah. And they played the movie called A Thief in the Night, where people were smoking dope, which I had done just before going to the youth rallies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and those people uh, got left behind. Mm -hmm. And uh, then there was a left behind, all that kind of stuff. The so, dope smokers got left behind. Yes, they did. Okay, I thought you meant the people watching no, the movie. No, the Christians And I said, got that would have been up. an interesting no. experience. Watching the movie, some people get taken. No, yes. that's right. So anyway... I, I grew up with all of that, and so it was deeply in me. I didn't know what I thought about it when I became a Christian. It never, it didn't, it didn't make me become a Christian sure. because I'm just opposed to people scaring me into things. Right, and that's just my nature. I'm opposed to that. You can't fear me into buying something. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but over time, as I began to read the Bible, and particularly, people always wanted to know about the Book of Revelation and what was going to happen at the end of time, I began to read the Bible myself. There's not enough in the Bible to defend what I had been taught as a kid. They're just It's just not there. That's right. It's just not there. So, so uh, to, to clear the deck, when, pe when people describe what that term, the rapture, what they're describing is an event that happens where Jesus comes and snatches all the Christians out of the world and leaves everybody else here on earth. And then a period of time comes where bad things really happen to these folks and they get another chance. Tribulations. Tribulations well. and stuff. They get another chance to believe in Jesus and trust him. And then, uh, I'm oversimplifying. Yeah. Then there's the end of the age where Jesus comes back and it's a ball it's, game. It's ball game's finally over. Well, actually, then it depends on which version uh, you are. It again, I know I'm again, oversimplifying. Yeah, but, there's a. But millennium. that's what they mean when they say the rapture. It's that whole thing. That's people disappearing, and it's all the Christians are gone. And there's that's people what that are was left classically home. taught in churches on the wall with the charts. Yes. And in the books and left behind books. That's what they all of that. Yep. But. What I have discovered in talking to people about the rapture, when you talk to most people, what they mean when they say, I believe in the rapture, is they mean, I believe Jesus is coming back to receive his own. Ah, correct. And that's, that's different. That's all most people. When I have gotten down to it, what people mean is, I believe Jesus is coming back to receive his own. And I believe that too, because that's in the Bible. Correct. Yes, and so I say to people when I've when I finally gotten to it, what do I believe about that, all of that? But this other thing, this rapture theology, mm -hmm. I just say to people, you ought to you ought to just say you believe in that. I believe I believe that Jesus is coming back, and I pref I think the right way to say this, not that I want to quibble over words because I'm from Mississippi, so you know that wouldn't be our force our forte. Uh, I think the right way to say is Jesus is coming back to be with his church, mm -hmm. not to take his church somewhere. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the age, the city, the, the new city of Jerusalem, the new heavens and earth are going to be here. Mm -hmm. And right. he's, he's going to be with us, mm -hmm. not we are going to be with him. Mm -hmm. He's coming to be with us. And God gets what he wanted in the Garden of Eden, a place where we and him can be together together. This becomes the temple we were also mm -hmm. supposed to have to be with God. And I think also to be very clear, and I'm kind of speaking for Ed here, but I think when you said what you said in that message, what you were saying was that first way of me defining the rapture is the part that's not in the Bible. And I also, to be clear, what, we're, what he meant by that was this, what we call rapture theology of that construct of Jesus secretly snatching his church out and leaving everybody else for a time. Um, that teaching, that doctrine, did not enter into the Christian consciousness until the 1800s in a very specific place. Yes, and I'm not trying to equate these two, but there, there are sociological things that go on in certain times in history that things happen. So this also happens at the same time. In this period of history, if you take a certain period of time for from this period of time to 60, 70 years, there's a lot going on. Uh, <laughs> at the same time, Mormonism begins. That's right. Right. It's all about the same time. Not very long after that, uh, Jehovah's Witness movement begins. That's there's right. a, and they're all they all have these things about 
uh, I have a new understanding about this that right. no one's really understood yeah. until just now. Right. Uh, there's sort of a turmoil going on in the United States. The Civil War is just about to happen. Mm -hmm. This gets a big push in the South when you ever wonder why it's more believed in the South than it really is other places. Mm -hmm. Well, there's some, I don't, I don't even want to get into all the reasons that's true, but the guy who promoted it, Darby, he had some really off track racist views as well. He did. That a lot of Southern churches really, and I'm not saying anybody that has believed this in the last 40, 50 years, I don't think any of the people who taught you that had any of those ideas. No. No. I'm just saying that that's where it came from. Maybe the generation or so before them who taught it, you know, things change over time. All of this is, uh, it's maybe it won't even be 200 years old for another seven or eight years. That's right. Right. So it's recent in the history Very of Christian. New. Very new. There haven't been Christians for 1,700 years that looked at any of the scriptures that people have looked at recently and said this is what they mean. That's right. And so you have the, the, the classic scriptures people look at and they mm -hmm. say there's a passage where Jesus says uh, it'll be like it is in the days of Noah mm -hmm. where once one will be left and one will be taken. Mm -hmm. And in the rapture theology, you want to be the one taken. Yes. But in the days of Noah, you did not want to be taken. <laughs> the taken yeah. people were the ones outside the ark yeah. and they're taken away by the water. Well, and to be clear, go back and read that passage. The context that Jesus is speaking within, he's speaking about the coming destruction of Jerusalem. Right. Sure. And being taken was when the Romans would come and take you away from That's your right. home and your family. And so the people left behind are the ones going, thank God. <laughs> That's exactly right. But again, the modern way of viewing that scripture it has been flipped on its, it's head. It's been flipped. And right. it's been taken out of context. That's exactly right. So that's the first classic place where people go. There's, an also, there's also another classic uh, passage where Paul's writing to mm -hmm. the Thessalonians and he's mm -hmm. talking about uh, there's a coming of time because they were all worried about their, their friends and family who had just recently been martyred. Mm -hmm. And they're worried... Oh, maybe they're not. They're going to miss out on they're the gonna resurrection. Miss out on the, that's right. And so he comes in and says, "No, no, no. Those folks are fine. When Jesus comes, they will be resurrected." And then he says, "We will meet the Lord in the air." Right. And a lot of people think, "Well, that means heaven." That's right. And it doesn't. It doesn't. Mean that <laughs> in at context, all. that does not mean heaven. It does not mean going to heaven and everybody else staying there. Well, and actually, in the Thessalonians, they would have taken it. There's a pretty they would have seen Romans do this all the time, that there are people that the citizens come out to meet the emperor. They're yep. all coming together. There you go. And it's the greeting of the king to come to be with them. Yep. Right. It's, it's not them going mm -hmm. anywhere. Mm -mm. They are coming to welcome the king to be with them. Exactly. There's, in fact, can we link two videos to this I don't podcast? See why not. We, there's, it's there's, our podcast. It's our podcast. There's a couple of videos that take all of the things that we just talked about and kind of do a really good job of succinctly because talking about Because the, the dude is smarter than us. Much <laughs> smarter than us. So we're going to put those links in the description and you can watch those on YouTube. So. Yeah. He's a professor at Asbury Seminary, which if you remember, they had a revival early that we talked about in a podcast somebody yeah. asked us about. Yep. And uh, he's a really, really bright man that mm -hmm. talks about this whole thing as well. Exactly. So when I say that, that's what I mean. I don't believe... The four things I've... I've summed up for people when they ask me what well, I believe Jesus is definitely coming back to be with his church. I don't believe there's anything left in history to take place that would prevent Jesus from coming back at any moment. Mm -hmm. I believe all things are in place that Jesus could come back. So we need to be ready because the, the phrase Jesus used is he could come like a thief in the night. That's we right. have to be ready and a thief doesn't tell you when he's coming. There are no signs. There aren't any notes. You don't go and say, hey, you'll notice three houses down now have been hit. You ought to pay attention. Mm -hmm. It's just going to happen. Mm -hmm. I believe that when he comes, the whole ball game of this age is over, and mm -hmm. the life of the world to come will begin, which is what the original message was about, which right. was the life of the world to come. What yeah. will happen in the life of the world to come? So that's that, what... Do you think that cleared it up? I don't know. I don't even. I also want to say it's okay with me if you believe the oh, yeah. other stuff. I don't think. It, the, I'll say. I will say this. I think there's some there's some probably byproducts of the people who really believe the whole dispensational stuff that I think. I don't want to just. 
It bothers me the way it makes Jesus sound. I hear mm. Christians say things like, well, it is really bad that this is all happening to those people. Like during the Hamas and Israeli conflict, and there are people that believe certain things have to happen about Israel before Jesus can return. Mm -hmm. And they'll hear these terrible, terrible things. They go, it certainly is bad that that has to happen, but the Lord has to have it happen or he can't come back. And I'm yeah. like, wow, yeah. that doesn't sound like Jesus to me. Mm, yeah, I think that does violence to the image of God seen in Christ. And there's also, and this was a big part of Darby's thing, is there's really no reason for the church to work on the world here when mm. we're going to be taken out of the world. Yeah. And clearly our mission is in this world. Yes. Well, be yeah. That's, that's, those are the things that I think that theology has done damage to, is people going, well, you know, I know... I know there are poor people. There are, Jesus said there are always going to be poor people among us. By the way, he wouldn't say so tolerate it. Yeah. That is not what he meant by that. It's kind of like a go get after it <laughs> yeah. kind of thing. He's just, he, all he's saying at this time is he knows Judas is the one that said to him, this shouldn't be used for this. And he's going, hey, man, you and I both know you're not really worried about the poor. I don't want to just throw you out in front of everybody. <laughs> we know you're a thief. Yeah. But, you're always going to have a chance to take care of this woman's trying to do something nice for me right. because I'm about to be I'm about to be crucified. He's just saying you'll always have a chance to do that. Let's let her do this. Mm. But he was not yeah. saying forget the poor and don't try it because it's hard to read Matthew 25 when he says, mm. "Hey, you know, at the end of time, goats and sheep are going to be separated, and part of it's going to be whether you took care of the poor or not." The other thing that you just brought to my mind that I think is another negative consequence of the full theology of the rapture is that it is it has instilled a, a huge sense in Christians even of fear mm -hmm. wrapped around the age to come. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I hear that a lot and, and, and I will say to a degree when I started coming of age and kind of getting in this mindset, it, it, did not, it did not inspire love towards Jesus in me, it inspired a lot more fear mm -hmm. and a lot more dread and um, something I was not looking forward to. Thankfully, I have shed myself of, of a lot of that in my adult years. But um, the, the early church, as I read the, the letters from, from the apostles and all of the, all of the history of the early church, there was not a sense of fear attached to the coming age that Jesus was going to usher in. It was an anticipation, and therefore we live in it now to prepare for the day when he brings it fully. It's that uh, coming but not yet kind of thing. Right. And, and it was a forward-looking, hopeful, excited, um, it draws out love and care and, and mercy out of me for the people around me so that they can too participate in this coming kingdom that is available in Christ. So this, what I see a lot of this rapture theology is you better watch out. It's going to come, and, it, and, and you better get ready, or you're going to get left behind. Right. And it does nothing but, even in Christians, they're all like, I mean, I, you, maybe you haven't seen that. There are videos online where people will pull pranks on people, believers, where they will make them think that the rapture has happened. Right. Mm -hmm. I've seen these, mm -hmm. and they're genuine. And these people, it's terror. It's mm -hmm. panic. And it, it's not the way of Jesus. And yeah. so in anything... You know, true love drives out fear. Our spirit is not a spirit of fear that, that, that Christ has given us. So I see that as one of the reasons that I also uh, don't lean into that as well. So well, I just think, want to say that. Yeah, I think by and large to whatever the point of our uh, thoughts of the world to come, the reason the book of Revelation is written, the Thessalonians in particular as well mm -hmm. gets written, and Matthew, even those, those, those verses out of Matthew, Jesus is writing to a group of people. Jesus is speaking. The mm -hmm. other John and you know Paul are writing to a group of people who are suffering because of their faith. Mm -hmm. And there are these parts in the Bible, I think, to our modern freedom of religion uh, people reading them 
they sound really harsh when 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 Jesus describes what is going to happen to non-believers. And I think at times we go, oh, that makes me really uncomfortable to think about. Or you have the other side, which is like, oh, can't go get them. Yeah. But, you know, one of my favorite books, Patient Ferment of the Early Church, which is yeah, about yeah. the early church who's suffering under persecution. It's pretty interesting. A lot of the prayers that are written by the early church fathers are about, we know, as Paul says in, in Romans 12, you know, uh, vengeance is for mm -hmm. the Lord. Your job is to love your enemies. Mm -hmm. Your job is to pray for those because, and we miss this, it's a little easier, honestly, when someone, it, my persecution is someone called me stupid on the internet for believing in God, it's still fairly easy to go, you know, I hope they get saved one day. And mm -hmm. I hope they get... It's really difficult when someone just took your pregnant wife and threw her to lines and cut open the baby and leaves the baby out to die. It's really hard to sit there and go, now how can I love that person? Right. Mm -hmm. And to know there is a coming world where not only all of the love and the gentleness and forgiveness that I have offered this person will be rewarded to me, but also, God's going to bring justice one way or the other. Mm -hmm. There's a way that it actually allows me to do the Jesus way. Yep. That I go, and when I know there's coming a kingdom where I will have no wants, man, I can I can be more generous in this world mm -hmm. because I don't need, it isn't a YOLO thing. I don't need to get every vacation. Someone's, uh, my kids and I were talking about, they, we, ha we have multiple friends who, uh, they, they've heard about, oh, my friend went to, to Europe or my friend did this. And they go, oh, I'd love to go. I said, I'd love to go to Europe one day too. And hopefully that'll happen for me in this life. I know if it doesn't happen in this life, I'll be okay. Yeah, that's right. That things will be, because you know what? In the world to come, there's mm -hmm. going to be wonders I can't even imagine. It allows me mm -hmm. to live the Jesus way to know mm -hmm. whatever it takes. And there's a lot of, when you look at these debates over what is going to be happening in the, in the age to come, it, it has often happened uh, in in relatively safe environments and these kind of things. And we've lost a little of that touch. And what has been helpful to me is when I draw near to people who are suffering and I am with people, because I just don't have a, a ton of suffering in my life. Mm -hmm. and when I'm near people are suffering, when I'm near the poor and they long for a world that is just uh, where where all needs are taken care of, I'm not as interested in 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 the rapture or even what's going to happen on the other side. I'm just going, God, make make this happen. Mm -hmm. And in the in between time, how can I live as if that world's already here? That's right. And I and I would just encourage whatever whatever you believe about what happens in the end times. If it's if it's evoking fear, yeah. And and it and it's making you go, well, I need to store up for myself because yeah. I need to get ready. Someone one time accused me in a, after a sermon. They said, you know, you're not preparing people for when Jesus is coming. You need to talk about it more. You need to tell them what because you got to prepare them. And I said, I believe by teaching people to live the way of Jesus in this life, I am preparing them for the world to come. Yeah. And I think, the, I think there are people, I believe there are believers who believe somehow when Jesus comes back and the ball game's over, there's this just, well, then I'll, I'll be exactly what I need to be. I believe there's there are going to be groups of people who will make it to the kingdom, and will be completely unprepared. Y'all, y'all know, and I, I can't. I've been sitting here trying to think when you were talking about preparing people for the world to come. There's a line in an old song, and I think it's a Christmas carol, where we sing and fit us for heaven to live with you. What is yeah. that song? Uh, it's a way in a manger, isn't it? I don't know. Yeah, I think I, that right. line has always sort of stuck in my head that there is a work that God has to do to fit me, yep. yes. to get me ready for mm -hmm. heaven. And I I think the decision kind of theology that says, all I need to do is get people to do a thing and they'll be ready for heaven. There is a fitting work that yes. needs to take place. Mm -hmm. And um, Well, and scripture makes it clear, there's there's even the, the most ready will need work done. Oh, oh yeah. absolutely. There yeah. will be a purging of, of all that is not of love and yeah, not of it Christ. Will be burned away. It will be burned away in me. That's right. And, and my job in this life is to let there not, to be less of that. Yeah, that's right. That's okay. right. Saved even though through the fire. Is well, the I'm going through problem. the fire. I Every... just don't want it to burn quite as much as it does. And that's there, right. there seems to be this way that Jesus talks about the world to come where he talks about uh, this idea of reigning 
and those mm-hmm. who those who do well with little mm-hmm. receive receive more. And I'm not talking. And this is this is not I, about. Trying I don't to even know what to make of that. But Jesus, is pretty, Jesus is pretty dang clear yeah. that people that are more faithful here will have more responsibility there. And I know for all of us who like everything to be equal. Yeah. Well, that, and yeah. I. I don't know for sure what he means, but but he he doesn't say that once. Wow. He says he alludes to that kind of thing more than once. Mm-hmm. And the way uh, D Dubs Dallas Willard says it uh, is our process on earth of discipleship is training for reigning. Right. We are being prepared for this world to come so we could be trustworthy people. Uh, I, you know, I remember my wife often helps me write a lot of stuff. A lot of people don't know that. My wife is very involved with a lot of my stuff and just has lots of good thoughts on stuff. And one time she wrote this thing for our students years ago um, and I was performing it. I was, because she does not like to be on camera. If you ever met my wife, she don't ever, you put it, she don't want me taking pictures with my phone of her. Hey, you look nice today. (laughs) Delete that picture. Uh, But I was performing one of these, uh, one of these pieces and she had, she had wrote in there, this part where Paul says, I think it's in Timothy. He says, I, I'm thankful that God has considered me trustworthy Mm. to be a messenger. And she wrote in the thing, I know our goal is to trust God, but isn't it something special if God could trust you? And I thought, that is the goal. And I remember just pausing. Bill was running the camera at the time. I said, hang on, I got to think about that for a second. That's Mm -hmm. really good. This thought of God would consider me trustworthy, that that there is a world to come. And as you put in the thing, we're going to be working. There's stuff that... You know, people often think of the Garden of Eden as perfect. The Bible never says the Garden of Eden was perfect. It says it was good. Yeah, that's right. Because perfect, especially in Hebrew, is this idea of complete, that it was done. Well, and we know it wasn't perfect because there was evil. Correct. There was evil in the Garden. But God's intention was for us to go on together as Mm -hmm. co-laborers, co-rulers, to continue to build and to create and to work and to craft this planet. And that it seems as if... Uh, the way the language in Revelation, which kind of draws back a lot to the Garden of Eden, that this will be what the new Jerusalem and the new the new world to come will be is us working with God. And man, I really hope that that I have proved myself to be trustworthy. Mm-hmm. That that God might go, hey Nathan, I got some responsibilities that only I can trust to you. Mm-hmm. Hey Ed, I got some tr- only only to you, Jason. I got mm-hmm. this for you. That that would be such an honor. And so my my in hope for people who are listening, because I, I told them before we fell, I just don't have a lot to say about the rapture. It's never been a part of my story. I just don't know a lot about it. What I would say is if it's instilling fear or if it instills this idea to you of, well, my job is just to get the decision made. So I, and that's fine. And I got to get other people just to make decisions. Who cares? If I got to scare them really good and get them to make a decision, that's fine. We want to be a community of people who are training one another that when we meet one another in the world to come, we it would almost be sometimes a little hard to recognize when we go, oh look at look at what God's done in you. Oh look at this. This is the real. This is the real you. And what a beauty that is. Mm-hmm. That would be a wonderful thing. Yes. So, um, like I said, we'll, we're going to throw a couple links in the description uh, for you to kind of get a little bit more scholarly, succinct answer to the question. But uh, for those of you who had uh, that question and it there's still stuff you're wondering about, send it in. Uh, we're, we're at a point now where we're, st- I don't think there's any uh, questions left on the form right now. So we're waiting on some to come in for, so we can shoot next time. And so um, you can probably get your question in next week. So go to the description, uh, fill out that form, send us a question in about this or about something completely unrelated, completely different. And uh, who knows, you might land on episode 200 coming up mm. in about three weeks. So wouldn't that be cool? All right. See you guys. Have a great week.